This is my business phone. And typically, I would hate for this to take up additional room on my desk. But with this phone in particular, I have a multi-view of several of my security cameras. And let's say someone's trying to enter the office and they initiate a doorbell call. It instantly rings on my phone as well. I see a live view. I can accept, unlock the door, or just decline that call. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Bogdan Shpurny, founder of Apex One IT, and we do small business phone systems. This is the Unify G3 Touch Pro, the latest generation of VoIP phones from Ubiquiti. And essentially all you need to make this work is a Unify console that can run Unify Talk application, and also a phone line that typically starts at $10 or even less if you're a nonprofit. But that's not what this video is about not call flows or anything like that. I want to show you the physical features of this phone or unified talk phones in general and give you a understanding of how this to use the integrated applications as well, such as Unify Protect and Access. I'm coming from Yealink phones that we typically deploy with Microsoft Teams phone systems. So I can tell you that this is built very well. It comes in a little bit over two pounds. Stand here, it doesn't have any kind of separate mechanism that can break. It just has soft pads, it's heavy, so when you put your phone down, it really just goes down well. And you can tell that this display has some kind of anti-glare on it, as opposed to this top where the camera mics are, that's kind of glossy. It's a five inch, 720 by 1080. You can see where it has my name and phone number associated. It's very crisp, like you can read that from here, no problem, no, no pixelation, nothing. So kind of surprised, very, very good looking display. Your speaker here, and on the other side, a standard 3.5 millimeter eighth inch headphone jack as well. And then coming all the way around, that's where you plug in your ethernet cable powered by PoE and can daisy chain your computer if you need to. And I'll show you a couple more physical phone features as I show you the demo. So when you kind of touch the display, it goes from the lock screen to whatever last tab that you used here. You can do your standard phone call, so just dial whoever you need to. By default, it goes into the speaker if you pick up the handset, it transfers to the handset. Now, if you click this button, that's to mute. You can see that mutes right there. Unmute, you can place the call on hold. If I place this handset down right now, it will end the call, or you can transfer it back to speaker. You know, you can dial, you can go back to the keypad if you need to. We can park the call. When the call is parked, you can actually jump to other apps as well. So that's nice. You go back here to reset and there's the call. Back on the call. We can also transfer. So for example, let's go to Diana. We can warm transfer, which means I will first speak to her. It'll call her phone, which I have right there. Or just add her to a call. No, call her. And let's go back. Say we're done. We can just place the handset down. Okay, then if we go over to contacts, by default, you'll just have your internal contacts and you can filter right here all internal, external, and you'll have your global context. So that's done in the unified dashboard in the web interface. Here though, you could add your own contacts. You can click this plus, any phone number, and save that. But those are not global contacts that will only show up on your phone. Now we can call anybody just by tapping on their name and that will ring their phone number. Or if you have a internal contact that doesn't have a associated phone number, it'll just ring their phone. So there I'm calling, it's showing up, right? And, and you can have a call like that, do all the same fun functions here. For internal users, there's a couple of more functions. So for example, in here, let me just show you. If I filter to internal only, this is a group here, the IT help desk, but let's go to this user, tap on the I. Now I have a regular call, video and intercom. I can also go here to edit. You can actually do this on any contact and modify the ringtone. So there's other ringtones, not just the standard one. This is a global user, you know, they're part of the system, so I can't rename them here, but you can just change the ringtone. Now let's go back. I can do a video call. So there's a camera here. Okay, so this is, you can see the quality of the camera right here. Pretty good. You know, it's back. If I go to this window here, it's gonna, you know, pretty bad backlight there. So it's calling right now, I'll answer. Okay, so my video feed is right here at the top, the smaller window. 
And then the other fee is from the other phone that I have right there. There is a privacy shutter on the actual video. So you, you see it cuts it off completely there. And there it is back. We can also select intercom. And that essentially automatically dials the other phone number associated with that user. So it just connects automatically. And you can have it set up so you're muted when you receive an intercom call or, or not. And this is what it looks like when someone else initiates a video call towards you. So it's actually giving me my phone camera feed. Any user I can also add as a favorite. This one already is a favorite. They just have a phone call associated with them. But if I had an internal user and I add them to your favorite, it can be for intercom for a video call, right? I can select what that favorite function does. So here it shows a little video icon by that contact, meaning that it will initiate a video call. And then in the recent is our recent, you know, call history. And you saw there was a little red notification for a missed video call that I had. You can filter just to the missed calls video or whatever calls they were. And then finally we have voicemail. So it shows me a red dot. And that's by the way, why this LED indicator is pulsing in blue. That just means you have some kind of notification, either missed calls or voicemail. So let's listen. We, we have something here from Bruce Wayne. So it'll just play back hey, the message. Bruce. You can pause it. You can call back, delete that. We can also transcribe this. So the first time you click to transcribe, it takes a couple seconds, depending on how long that voicemail is. And that's the transcription. Now, if I already transcribed this once and I tap on that same voicemail, it'll just instantly show you that again, which is nice. I wish there was a setting to automatically show this. If you do have this set up for emails, uh, that's kind of separate from the phone, it will show you the transcription in your email. And your personal voicemail greeting is set here by tapping on greeting, which essentially gives you instructions on how to do that. You just have to dial and hold one and that'll take you to your voicemail setup. Okay. And finally, it does have like a, if you're familiar with an iPhone, I guess Android phones as well. If you pull down from the top, it'll give you any missed notifications here as well. It's kind of your control center. First you have your status, right? Available, do not disturb. And you can do a redirect and punch in a number there. And when you put do not disturb, you see the red indicator light uh, will be on. Then we have the screen brightness right here, the volume which is the same as this button down here. So this is a shortcut to your volume. And then that's your app switcher. But let's jump back here to our control center. These are kind of all settings for the phone. We'll jump in later. This, if, if you want to preview your camera, what your lighting situation looks like, you can do that here. And then if you want to add any kind of Bluetooth headphones, that's where you do that. Let's jump to the protect app. This down here is the app switcher. So typically we're in the phone and you just tap on protect. And it brought me back to my multi view that I had previously selected. And in this multi view, if it functions just like the protect app on your phone, for example, right? I can, I can jump to any of these and I have other multi views set up. Also the door access, since you can add access now to protect, right? And I can swipe between these. As you can see, different kinds of setups uh, lead to different kinds of views on the phone. I found that the three camera configuration is the best. It looks differently when you have a horizontal display, but it looks like the phone is smart enough to understand and put it kind of in a vertical, you know, sequential order here. In order for a user to be able to set this up, they do have to be an admin for Unify Protect in this case. Now, it doesn't mean they have to have all the permissions. The minimum permissions they need is a live view, I think it's called, where they can just view only the live feed. A better alternative, I would say, and we can actually jump all the way back out of this. You can see this really looks like the app. Like it has all these you know, shortcuts. You can see all the devices, uh, detections here, and settings as well. So if you jump into another camera, just like you would on, the, on your phone, you can scroll the timeline right very smoothly. It has this like sound haptic feedback you probably can't hear. You can just look at motion events. So for someone to be able to look at recordings, not just the live feed, they have to be an admin with view only rights. And you can even select for different admins, you can select exactly which cameras they have those rights to, which is nice, especially if you know large space and you only, you know, maybe one or two cameras that a specific user needs to see. For Unify Access, same thing, app switcher, 
go to access. Same idea here, you have to be an admin, with some permissions level, minimum being live view again, which allows you to see this here, unlock the door. You can also view the live feed, just tap on this. And I can speak out of that access reader there, unlock the door as well, or close that. If you want to receive the doorbell calls from the reader, then you actually have to upgrade the admin to door attendant level. And you have to go to access settings and enable admins to receive doorbell calls. That's in, that's in access settings in the web. When you do receive calls, let's make one now. What you want to do, I mean, you can accept it. If you want to end the call, that will end the call for everyone. Like if there's other admins receiving the call. So if you don't want to do it, then just close this right here. Okay, the call still is ringing to other admins or the app, Unify it in the app, whatever you're using. Yeah, let me show you the last part, kind of the phone settings. So we can jump to the app switcher, jump to settings or also to that control center, go to settings. Here's that status part again, saying that we had a control center available to not disturb, redirect. The other thing you can do here is schedule the status. So you can add a new right start time. Uh, and usually, so you, you don't schedule when you're available, you schedule when you're not. So you do, for example, let's say after 5 p.m. Uh, till the next day, let's go 8 a.m. The status will be do not disturb. And I should point out that the, all these kind of settings, they really apply to the phone app. If you're, you know, if you get calls from door access, they still go through regardless of your status here. Okay, so there's that, and we can repeat this, right? Maybe every day of the, of the week, weekday, and then set another schedule as well. So you can add a new status as well. In call settings, it's really about the intercom, whether or not your headset or phone is muted or unmuted when you receive intercom call. The display, so the lock screen, yes, yeah, so you can set a lock screen password, for example, like this, and that means every time you touch the phone, you have to input the password. Although not when you receive calls or anything like that, it's still going to go through without password. Now, regardless of whether or not you have the lock screen enabled, auto lock means when your display changes back to that kind of home view, you can still change this. So if 30 seconds is too fast, you can put that to one minute up to five minutes. Work remotely is to set up the phone remotely if you're not in the same network. In the office G3 handset, so this is talking about the wireless handset, not the wired one, there is a wireless option. It's an, it's an upgrade option. Then in system, this is mainly resetting, restarting the phone. Finally, advanced. So this is kind of the backend settings of this device. And I would point out some of the important stuff here is in sound. You can actually see that relatively controlled the media volume, call volume, ring volume, alarm volume, touch sounds. So that's sounds from doing this, haptic feedback. Anyways, this shortcut still works for your overall sound level. And then if you're if you're working with this stuff, you need to enable this over Wi-Fi. If it's not plugged in through Ethernet, you can do that here. And also, the, those are our same connected devices, Bluetooth devices we worked on before. And so firmware update, I mean, I would manage all that through the web interface in unify.ui.com. So here under network as well, I should have mentioned, there is some VLAN configuration you can set here. Right now, it doesn't matter to me because I control that with the Unify switch. So that's the easiest way to do that. Okay, and about the phone, this is the UTP G3 Dash Pro. Before we go on, please like this video if it was helpful to you and subscribe for more content like this. So this G3 Touch Pro is the most affordable one at $200. Ubiquity should have a larger version coming out called the G3 Touch Enterprise for 300 and also the Touch Wall that's basically wall mountable like this. Here I have on the desk the previous generation G2. It's a, essentially, it looks similar like this, but you can see just the size difference and how much more beneficial it will be. It will just be a little bit nicer. It won't have this really glossy screen, I'm sure. But in any case, that's not out yet. I do create videos every single month showing you which Unify products have come out. So if you want to see that, know when this phone's coming out, then click up here to see those videos. Once the larger phone is out, I will try to get a review on it and I'll have it down here below. If you have any questions, post it down below. Thanks for watching. Take care.